Hi, I'm Gene Corbett from the Department of Medicine, and I'm uh, here to talk about the, uh, the, the skills that we'd like the students to acquire in the first year uh, in the use of the ophthalmoscope, uh, and more specifically, examining the undilated eye. What we've designed is a, is a five-step uh, skill uh, exercise that we'd like you to take them through one step at a time, and I'm going to illustrate those. The first two will be strictly me showing you some things about the scope, and the other, with Bill's kind help, we're going to demonstrate uh, the last three steps, which have to do with positioning and the actual examination of the eye using the lens uh, uh, skills that I'm going to show in just a second. Uh, so it's a five-step process, and uh, it really involves knowing how to use this scope. So I, what I want to start with is, uh, is just talking about the scope for, for just a moment. Most scopes, of course, turn on at midsection with a switch that actually adjusts the intensity of the light itself. And if you notice as I turn that, and most students don't always appreciate that, so we want to be sure that they, they notice that because when we do the examination of the exterior part of the eye, we want bright light and when we want them to then to begin to learn how to observe the disc in the retina, we want them to be able to turn the light intensity down. So they need to, as simple as that, they need, they need to learn to use that switch. So the first two exercises have to do with simply introducing the students to the two types of lenses that are on this scope. And the way we would like the students to learn about this is to actually have them demonstrated to themselves first. So what they'll do, what you'll have them do is you'll tell them to hold their hand with their glasses off the refractive power of these scopes are much greater than the refractive power of most human eyes, so they don't need their glasses. Turn the scope on and have the student hold their hand three inches, just about three inches from the distance of the scope. And to turn the lens uh, circular until they see some structure on the back of their hand in perfect image, with perfect sharpness. And once they've done that, we want them to take a look and see what lens they're using. Invariably, they're going to come up with a green or black numbered lens. These are your short focal length lenses. And once you've gone through your group of students, you'll find that depending on whether they're far or near, that that number may change. But the basic idea that we want them to get at this level is simply that if you are about three inches, you're going to have a number on here about three to five to seven. And once they've done that, then the second part of that exercise is to ask them then to do the exact same exercise, but pull the hand almost completely into the nose and to redial and to once again look and see what lens they're using. I happen to go from a green three to a green nine and so it just simply illustrates that as you dial up using the green or black short focal length lenses that the uh, focal length diminishes. So we want them to begin to get used to the idea that these short focal length lenses, the number that comes up on the lens or the lens that you use is really just a function of how far they are from the object they're looking at, usually within about a five inch distance. So that's the first exercise. Once they've done that, then you want to do an exercise that introduces them to what are called the infinite focal length lenses. These are the ones that are noted by having a red number on the scope. And the exercise that, that illustrates this to them, and it's better almost to do the exercise first and talk later, is to have them look at something across the room. Maybe it's going to be an outlet, maybe it'll be the corner of a picture, maybe it'll be the hand of a watch and have them turn the dial again until they get a really sharp picture of something. Now, right now I'm on a red three. Invariably students will give you a red zero, one, two, three. Your myopic or short-sighted or short, uh, short uh, sighted students, nearsighted students uh, may have to be dialed up to an 11 or 12 and occasionally higher. But if you have them go through that exercise, they will identify the long focal length, what are called the infinite focal length lens that fits their refractive power. And so it's probably helpful to point out to them with the short focal length lenses, the number of the dial is a distance, is a function of the distance from the object. Whereas the long focal length lens that they get for looking at something across the room, is going to be a function of their refractive power. And if there are three now, they're going to be a three 10 years from now. I've been a four since medical school. So that's the short focal length exercise and the far or infinite focal length exercise. And then they'll learn, for example, from that, that if you want to look at a retina, you just dial up to a unique long focal length number, minus a minus four, and that'll serve you to see most people's retinas as soon as you go in without having to turn and turn and turn until you find the right one. So they're actually the first two steps. 
Now what I want to do now is to talk a little bit about positioning, which is the third exercise, and then I'm going to show you how to apply the two lens uh, uh, looking skills to actual examination on, on our uh, friend Bill. Now the positioning exercise has to do with the ideal position that the student needs to be in to have good visualization of the eye. The ideal position works something like this, and let's see, Bill, maybe if I can get you to turn this way mm -hmm. so that we can get a side angle. The idea here is that the patient needs to be comfortable, and so does the examiner. But they also have to be aware that one peephole is trying to look inside of another peephole, so you have to be fairly close. So the student has to begin to get comfortable with being that close, but also, and probably more importantly, is making the, the patient feel comfortable with a close examination of the eye. And so this exercise has to do with simply having the students know that there's at least two or three things to be sure and do. The first is have the patient be comfortable and give them something to look at that's straight ahead and level. They need a specific thing to look at, otherwise the eye tends to wander. So Bill, let's see what's straight ahead and maybe the lower left corner of the, sure. of the picture. Mm -hmm. So if you'll just watch that as we do the exam. And so number one, and it's a simple thing, but it's important not to go past it, is give the patient something specific to look at. It should be level and it should be centered so that when the examiner comes in to examine the eye, they know exactly where that eyeball is facing. And that becomes important with more uh, detailed examination of the retina. For positioning, for, for holding the instrument, you generally should hold the instrument in the same hand that the eye is looking. So I'm going to first look in Bill's left eye and I'm going to hold this in my left hand. The second important piece is to have your hand on the examiner's head with your thumb above their eyebrow. This allows you to know exactly where the patient is to give some steadiness to the exam, but also enables you to concentrate on looking through the scope and let your proprioception tell you exactly where the patient is. So this is the correct position that we'd like to have the students assume. Holding them like this is fine, but for some patients especially, there may be too much movement. Not touching the patient at all makes it very hazardous because it's very easy then to have the examiner bump into the patient. So hand above the eye, hold things steady. Left hand for a left eye look and right hand for a right eye look. So that's basically what we want them to be able to do in terms of the positioning. Now I'm going to now apply what I would do if I were actually going to examine first Bill's eyes with a short focal length lens and then I'm going to show, do the same thing with an infinite focal length lens and that'll be pretty much what we want the students to be able to do. So if we wanted them to examine, say, the cornea, which is an extraocular, or at least it's anterior to the lens, you would have them dial up to a 15 or a 20 on the scope, which pretty much places the distance of the scope from their eye about an inch and a half. So I've got this on a 20, and I'm going to just demonstrate to you how close I need to be to have Bill's iris in perfect focus. That means the plane of the focal length is coincident with the plane of his iris, which is about where you want to be if you want to do an anterior chamber or a corneal examination. My right hand is on the head, thumb above the eyebrow, keep your fingers out of the eye so it's, the patient's not uncomfortable. I have the scope in my left hand for a left eye exam, and I'm going to try to come up so I'm at least less than two inches from the cornea. And now I've got an excellent view of the iris. and can see all that I want. And the value of having your hand up here is that if you come close, you hit your own forehead on your thumb before you hit the patient. So this technique is very important. Then we would do the same examination on the other eye. Excellent view of the iris. And I'm probably just about two inches, maybe a little bit less from the cornea. Is that comfortable, Bill? Did you That's feel fine. That? That's fine. Yes. yes. 